Thank you very much and good morning to everybody. Uh, actually, this presentation belongs to Thai Pak, which is a Chinese restaurant in uh, a small town called Culiacan in Mexico. And this presentation belongs to Jaime Jr. and Thai Pak. So I don't know why I'm standing here. Actually, he should be coming and making the presentation. And that's what is going to happen. A little story why is Jaime Jr. Why do we put Jr.? Uh, when we went to uh, Mexico, we found out that uh, the eldest son carries the same name as his father. So Jaime Jr.'s father is Jaime. He was, of course, here. And uh, he says that if he has son, his name is also going to be Jaime. Now, we had a problem when we went over there. There was Jaime and Jaime, and possibly one more Jaime to come. So, <laughs> so how do we address them? So we said, OK, Jaime Senior and Jaime Junior. And that's how uh, we address them. So Jaime Junior is going to take the presentation. He is the chief operating officer of Taipac. And uh, before that, he was running an internet company, six months back, that is. And uh, now he decided to come into the business, and he is running the show. Uh, he is just 21 years, but doing a fantastic job. So in my lifetime, if I have seen uh, uh, real TOC champions, he happens to be one of them. So I'll hand it over to Jaime. Jaime. Thank you very much, Sanjay. I already have a mic. So you can keep this. Wow. It's a real pleasure to be here, you know. Uh, as Sanjay said, I was running my internet company just a few months back. So uh, I sold magic tricks by internet. So I was sitting in my, in my living room on a Saturday when my father came. And he gave me this uh, piece of paper. like. And he said, can you go to my office tomorrow? And I was like, OK, I haven't done anything bad yet, so why not? So just out of curiosity, I uh, started reading this, this paper. And it said, we will double your profits in one year. And we will standardize your operations in three months. Honestly? I was laughing. I was, if these guys can do that, I mean, they stay, they can. So I was, or either these guys are lying, or they know a really, really good magic trick. So I should know about that so I can start selling it, right? So next day, I come to my, to my father's office, and I realize that my cousins are there. So this is an, uh, a business family, family business. So my cousins are there. The, all the senior level people is there. And uh, in one corner, I see these two guys who seems like Indian guys. And I was like, OK, this is very interesting. Chinese family running a Chinese restaurant in Mexico. And now, all of a sudden, a couple of Indian guys are going to give us some advice. How great is that? Right? So I took my place in there. Sanjay Prasun, who is also here, they both started uh, to explain how were they going to achieve this uh, increase in profits and these operations um, stabilizing and all that. And I realized that this makes a lot of sense. Still, the goal seems extremely uh, high to me. But how are we going to achieve it makes a lot of sense. It's logical. So I said, OK, I have nothing to lose if I, if I uh, keep sitting in here for a couple of hours. It was a Sunday. I worked two hours a day at that point of time, two hours a day. And well, on Sunday, I don't have to work, but it's OK. This is an interesting guy, so I'll just sit in here. And by the end of the meeting, out of nothing, 
Sanjay reached to me and he said, I know Jaime, you know Jaime, I want you to be the champion of the project. I still don't know why Sanjay picked me. So I hope we can have a dinner tonight so you can explain. And I hope you know, because I don't know why he did it. The only thing I know is that when he said that he wants me to be the uh, champion of the project, I was so happy because at that point I realized that this was the most important project our company has, has faced in the history. So I was very proud of uh, being part of it. And ladies and gentlemen, today I no longer run this internet-based business. And of course, I no longer work for two hours a day. So uh, if you would like, I would like to share with you the agenda. First of all, we'll talk about TIPAC. What's TIPAC, right? Then we will uh, review the situation before TOC implementation, what we were doing before uh, we started. Unique challenges in a restaurant, because a uh, restaurant is a business which uh, is in the ser service and also in production. So it's very interesting. How TOC was implemented, results, and key learnings at the end. So Taipak is a Chinese restaurant located in Mexico. It started in 1973 by my grandfather, Mr. Manuel Poon. And uh, it was fun because he just came out with this idea of having a Chinese restaurant and you know, Taipak, Chinese restaurant. And the first thing that happened was that uh, this man comes and he asked, do you sell bread? And my grandfather was, okay, this is a Chinese restaurant, where shall I sell bread? He was a very clever guy, so he went back and all of a sudden he had a tray of bread. By the time he finished baking the bread, the whole tray was sold out because there were a lot of businesses and schools around, so the smell of the bread We'll call them, and, and the bread was sold out. Uh, a couple of weeks after that, another uh, guy comes, and he asked, do you sell Mexican food? Okay, now I am a Chinese restaurant selling bread, and now you're asking me to have Mexican food. Good, he started cooking Mexican food. What else he can do? But in the process, he was understanding the market. He was realizing that he will need to change the recipe in order to, uh, to be able to, how do you say, adapt to the Mexican market. So he did that. The recipe, he created it with Mexican ingredients, Mexican taste, and now he was giving Chinese food for free, when you come for a bread, take a soup, take a chow mein, take anything you want. And then people started coming because of the food. And that was the start. Um, at that point of time, the dining room had a capacity of 40 clients. And you can imagine this. There, were, there was my grandfather cooking, his brother cooking, my two uncles and my father as a waiter. So you can imagine the service level at that point. This is the restaurant in 1970s. So you can see, very improvised, uh, not that fancy, but we had really good food. So even though we didn't have nice facilities, we had a lot of clients. And in the left, you'll see my grandfather, Manuel Poon, and his brother, uh, Francisco Poon, who were cooking in this picture. So 1985 was the first uh, big change. We changed locations into a very new restaurant with uh, more like uh, fancier facilities and we could accommodate uh, 150 clients in the dining room and now we had 12 employees. Great. Some new novel concepts were added, such as uh, air conditioner, you know, a proper dining room, and uh, waiters, uniforms, and all that. 
So at that point, it was really a novelty thing. And um, time passes. 1991 comes. And you just imagine this uh, dining room, big dining room for 150. A cashier in the, in the entrance. And then a lady with tubes in her hair for doing her, her, her hair. And a pajama with a huge container. And she comes. Can you fill this with uh, some food and just put uh, aluminum paper on the top? And I take it to my home. And we were like, OK. You look good in pajama, so why not? We did it. And all of a sudden, a lot of people were coming with their containers. So we realized that we had something to do in here. We created a new facility just for pickup. And it was the first uh, pickup service in, in Culiacan or, or town. Um, so can we go ahead, please? I okay. just wanted to add, uh, although they had kind of segmented the market, uh, which happened partly due to accident, partly due to uh, intentions, but they also ended up doing segmenting their resources. They created separate kitchen, separate facility to serve to this market. And we will look at it, like what happens because of this in, in later uh, slides. You're right. This is a TOC uh, conference, right? Sorry about that. <laughs> so um, this is the new restaurant in 1985. And it looks much better, right? Still not that good, but much better. It was a huge improvement. Next, in 1995, was the next big change. So you can notice that 10 years after that, so we, we uh, expanded our capacity to 300 clients. And then uh, 90 employees. We had 90 employees. And the brand became very important to us. We changed the brand. We uh, started to make some advertising and uh, renewing our, our image. So our clients, at this point, Every single person in Culiacan knew about Taipak. So it was extremely popular, very popular. Now, in 1997, some of the clients started to ask for home delivery. And of course, we created it. Uh, if you can see, the clients are the ones who are pushing us. And they expect a lot from us. Because being a, a very known restaurant, people want us to have more and more and more and more. So 2000, year 2000 came, and we opened an, a new restaurant with a, a 350 clients capacity. This is the one. So it's looking sexier, right? Much better. Year 2000 also, we created this raw material processing facility where we actually receive all the materials, we process them, and then we deliver it to the restaurants. In 2001, we created typepack.com. And we started to receive orders by internet. So you can actually log in, order, and get your food in your home. 2002, we created our call center so we can uh, get calls, get orders and then process them. 2006, we had a dream of having a premium restaurant with uh, better facilities, much better food, and a higher throughput, for sure. So we started it, 2006. 2008, we started a standalone express restaurant. This means it only has a pickup service. So we don't have a dining room in there, just pickup. And the reason for doing this was that, as Sanjay said, in the restaurant, we have a kitchen for delivery and uh, pickup service and a kitchen for dining room. So we were feeling that having two kitchens was extremely hard to manage. That is the reason why we decided to go ahead only with Express, because we can only handle one kitchen, so let's do this with one kitchen. That was the only way we can do it. This is Pangu. It's located um, inside a popular shopping mall in Culiacan. And this is Express. 
So before TOS implementation, we had two kitchens. We already reviewed that. Uh, we were doing batching. And the whole IT system was designed to batch. And what it means in, in the restaurant, we have uh, a lot of uh, dishes. But five dishes accounts for the 50% of the orders. So e every time we will have a dish, like a chow mein, for example, we will uh, look for another chow mein in the next uh, 10 or so orders. And if we do have them, we batch them and cook them together. right? So we were doing that. And by doing this, imagine that you have a wok, and you're cooking 10 dishes at a time. It's nearly impossible to serve the same amount of chicken, the same amount of vegetables, the same amount of everything. So sometimes the dish will be only chicken, and sometimes only vegetables. And the clients were complaining for sure. Taste was modified. This is a very important point, because we know that in the restaurant, we only have to take care of two things. Food quality, for sure, and service levels. If you have both of them, everything you do is going to work. If you don't have these two, it won't work. So you can do a lot of marketing initiatives. And if you don't have tasty food and good service, it won't work, right? So taste was modified because the, the, the walk was designed to uh, prepare one dish at a time. And we were preparing 10 dishes at a time. So imagine that, right? Now, only three waiters delivered the food. This means that we only had three waiters who were going in the kitchen and bringing the food out to the table of our clients. And just imagine this. If you are a guy who his only job is getting into the kitchen and, and delivering kitchen delivery and kitchen delivery, and you get into the table, you serve the food, and if the customer needs something, he's going to ask you. And you are not going to be able to deliver because you have to go back to the kitchen and deliver again. So we had a lot of complaints because of that. Service levels were extremely down because of that. We, of course, we didn't know about that. We also had independent departments. Uh, kitchen wouldn't help dining room and vice versa. And even if they wanted to help, they didn't know how to do it. The process was so unclear that they didn't know how to help each other. Also, we had a complex MTS in the service, uh, express service. So we have these uh, thermical bottles where we deliver the food. And we will start building an MTS. And these, uh, these bottles are good for 20 minutes. Past the 20 minutes, food quality goes down. With this MTS, we had to wait over 40 minutes to deliver. So we have this food in the shelf for 40 minutes. It's already bad when, when it uh, goes out of the kitchen. And that's why food quality was impacted. Uh, we had a peak time of 65 minutes per order on a peak day, on a peak time. How much time? Are you willing to wait for your food? 65 minutes? And people in Mexico are a little strange, meaning on Saturdays and Sundays we saw there were uh, 40, 50 people standing outside the restaurant and waiting for almost one hour, one and a half hours for the food. So Taipak was still managing the show. Yes, they were willing to wait for 40 minutes for a table and then 65 for the food. That's why I'm, selling, I'm saying that this People love our food, and that's it. And even though they love the food, we were not delivering the best food we can. Um, and we were focusing on less important issues. I mean, our marketing people didn't know how to approach this situation, where our service levels were not as high as, as, as it should, and our quality was inconsistent. So they were uh, focusing on dining room image, live music, short period marketing initiatives, which won't work if you don't have those two, right? And the strategy for growing was opening five new express restaurants. Again, this was based on the fact that we were not able to manage two kitchens at once, right? 
And of course, it's a lower investment. You saw the, the big restaurant and, and this express facility, right? And we were just about to launch our tea in the retail stores. Tea in the restaurant has a throughput of 80%. But in the retail stores, you cannot give 80% throughput, right? So, and, and also, we don't know anything about retail stores, but anyway, we were just doing that. And this is a very interesting chart. Um, this chart shows the time since the customer orders until he pays. So it's more or less the turnaround. And you will see that 70% of our clients were spending 50 minutes or more. 70%, 50 minutes or more since they order until they pay. And we'll review this chart in the results also with, with the current situation, right? Now, as I said, a restaurant has unique challenges. For example, the order is given only when customer walks in. Of course, you don't know what are they going to order, right? And uh, we are in an MTO environment. We already discussed that uh, we could not create an MTS and, and keep the quality as high as, as, as it should. So it's an MTO environment, and you don't know what the customer is going to order. Very short period, uh, product shelf life. Quality is extremely important, and there is no way of uh, measuring the quality but to taste every single dish. And that's not possible, just impossible. Very high perishability of capacity. If we open at 12 o'clock, and we don't use 20 tables. At 3 o'clock, when the restaurant is totally full, we will not recover these 20 tables. So that's a fact. And we have a huge spike in, in demand. So uh, in the year, for example, summer and December are very good months. In the month, with uh, payday, we have a, a peak. And in the week, weekends for sure, in a day, the uh, lunch time, right? So at that point, we identified our constraints. And what happened is, during peak times, our constraint is our kitchen and our dining room. That's it, right? During non-peak hours, the only constraint are the customers. Do we agree? And strangely, in the, meaning in this uh, case, it's uh, something different from manufacturing. That when in the evenings when uh, you don't have enough customers, you cannot prepare for the next day's peak hours. It's gone at that point of time. So if you can't attract customers, the capacity is just gone. So constraint was shifting uh, in the day, half the time, or rather three or four hours. It was the capacity, dining hall capacity, and rest of the time it was customers. Thank you. Now, the first thing we did, increasing the price. Actually, it was in the first week we started working with Avenir. And uh, they, we increased the price by 10%. And the result was an immediate increase of 14% in throughput. Just as easy as that, right? And, but there, there is a, another change that it, it's even more important than throughput in here. Sanjay and Prasun came one uh, uh, in a Sunday. By Monday morning, we decided to go ahead with the 10% increase. Sanjay reached to me and he said, Jaime, I need you to increase the price by 10% before I leave. And I was, Sanjay, you leave on, Sun on Friday. It's only five days, four days. We usually take three months to change prices. Are you crazy or what? Of course, I didn't tell him if I would, I wouldn't be here. He would just fire me like that, but I thought that. And I was like, okay, I had to move this, and we sat down with the marketing people to design a new menu, and I uh, gave a couple of calls to the printing company, and on a Friday, we were having this 10% uh, increase. So we were changing the, the way we worked. We no longer needed to wait three months. We can achieve things in less than that, five days. 
Now, also, we implemented immediately a weekly report meeting where we uh, gathered with the uh, senior level managers and uh, we discussed the throughput. We were reviewing things on a monthly basis before, and uh, now we're doing it weekly. Every Monday on, at uh, 4.30, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we are going to have that today, but yes. Now, um, can we go ahead? Or? Yeah, uh, this Monday meeting is very, very important because they, this company, Thaipak, used to look at, uh, review their results in a, in a month. So we told them that, look, let's start doing it in a week. And anyway, a week means there are 52 weeks, and that means four, 52 divided by 4 is 13, week, 13 months. So you will gain a month. So of course, at that point of time, there were some uh, resistance, but ultimately they did accept that. And uh, today, every Monday, bearing the, uh, I think today, they have this meeting very religiously. The whole top management sits. And the best thing is, for the complete top management, the only measure they have taken, the only measure is throughput, nothing else. So everybody in the top management, including Jaime and uh, Mr. Jaime Poon, who is Jaime Jr.'s father, everybody, Enrique, his brother, everybody is measured only on one thing. Whether the person is in HR, whether the person is in marketing, whether the person is in finance, doesn't matter. The only thing matters is the throughput of the company. Now, <clears throat> what we did after we noticed or situation. First of all, we knew that we were segmenting the market, which is correct for TOC principles, but we were also segmenting capacity, right? So that was the first step. We um, actually came to Caesar, who is our, uh, in charge of all the operations in the kitchen and dining room, and we said, Caesar, we need to combine kitchens. I know we've been working with this for the past uh, 20 years or so, but we need to combine kitchens. And not, also, not, not only that, we need to debatch. We are no longer batching things. And you can imagine uh, the face of Caesar. We were doing this because we thought this was the best way of doing that. And all of a sudden, Avenir came and changed everything. Even though Caesar didn't uh, actually trust, fully trust this debatching thing and combining kitchens, he went down with supervisors and he took one person of every single position in the kitchen and they designed a 2B process in six hours. Six hours. We were standing in the morning. By the end of the day, they were sharing with us the 2B process. That's awesome. To me, that's awesome because even though they didn't fully trust on, on this new system, at the end, after some explanations from Sanjay, they committed to the project. And they started building something from their own. That's the ownership. And that's the most important thing in this project. People is totally involved on what we are doing. Next day, and I'm sure Cesar couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't. Next day, they started implementation. Just like that. They started implementation. Now, this was the perfect plan. Debatching, combining kitchens. Uh, we took a close look to every single part of the process so we started on a Monday. Usually on a Monday, our peak time was for uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes and that's it, right? Because there isn't a big crowd out, of, out there. So 20 minutes was the standard before this implementation. The first day we came and implemented everything, 45 minutes. You can imagine the face on the people, on Caesar, even me. 45 minutes, what is happening? We are applying all the TOC principles, and all of a sudden we double our delivery time. But the, the, the interesting part of this is that next day we came with some changes, again, 45 minutes, 
More changes next day, 45 minutes. By the fourth day, every person in the kitchen was, okay, what's next? We want more changes. We know this is the way of doing it, and we know we want to be part of it. So the ownership that we created since the beginning is now uh, resulting in them wanting to achieve the goal and not us telling them do this and do that because we want to achieve the goal. Now, we also created a cooking manual which tells what to do, what not to do, and explains uh, the uh, proceed, uh, proceed procedure of uh, cooking. And, uh, well, there's a clear example. Now, we, we increased the price, we combined kitchens, we debatched, but uh, we were not there yet. So the first week, we had a meeting with marketing, and we knew that we need some mafia offer. So we came out with this offer. We serve you in less than 15 minutes, or you pay half. That's it, as clear as that. No other policies, this is it. 15 minutes or less, or you pay half. Of course, we were delivering in 45 minutes. Remember that, we were very far from there, but we knew that we need to achieve this. And if that wasn't enough, we also put this. If you don't like their dish, you just don't pay it. So we're making sure the time is good, but quality is much more important. Actually, uh, when we created the offer, the offer was created to actually put pressure on operations team. So offer was created that, look, next Monday, we are going with this offer, period. Now, either you improve or we close the company in another month's time because we keep giving uh, your 50% off. So at that point of time, we also thought that let's understand if we give this offer, what are the problems? What are the questions which can come from the customer? And one question which came very strong is, ah, so now you're giving in 15 minutes, maybe your quality has gone down. What do we do with that? So we said that, okay, can we say, can we give a bold statement that if you don't like the quality, we'll replace the, replace the dish, or maybe we'll give you back the money. But of course, meaning uh, if you, uh, you shouldn't have eaten more than one third of the dish. If you have eaten the whole dish, then you don't get back your money. So that's where this thing came up that uh, if you don't like your dish, you don't pay for it. Either you get a replacement or you get your money back. Yes, and Sanjay said something very interesting. We did that to put pressure on operations. I couldn't sleep for a week, so the pressure was also on me. And of, of course, Cesar couldn't also. And okay, in addition to that, every single dish is made when you order. It's going to be cooked one by one. You can customize your dish as much as you want. So if you don't want onions, then onions are taken out. So and as if this too was not sufficient, that is uh, 15 minutes and taste, we also added the third thing. Customize as you want, doesn't matter. We will still cook it for you. Now, of course, it has to be uh, something to do with uh, Chinese food, meaning you can't come and say that you, uh, you serve a sushi. That will not be possible. But uh, something in which is within the possibility. Yeah, right. Do you see any gaps in this offer? I mean, I think it's very, very complete. And uh, by, by doing this, well, we, we, we will review this result later on. We focus on creating a win-win-win situation. So every single change was made by, by the people. We never came and said, you know, we have to achieve this and do that. We said, we need to achieve this. How can we do it? You tell me. You are the expert. You know your, pro your process. I don't. So also we, we focus on training and developing people. 
That's, I think that's the most important thing on a company, developing people. If you can't develop people, you won't be able to grow. And uh, we created this program, which is very new. We just started this program two months ago, where every single person in the organization has a chance to become a general manager of, of our new restaurants. We had uh, people from the kitchen, from the dining room, and even some guy who was doing the cleaning in the night. This guy applied. And we interviewed him. At the end, we now are training five persons for this new position of general manager. But the way we are training them is based on the learning we've had in this process. So they already know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how to involve people. And if I have to pick one subject of this training is how to involve people. How to make something that in order for me to win, you have to win. Um, I would like to add something. Uh, the story is very special, not because of uh, operational improvement or not because of marketing. This story is very special because the entire thing is done by the people. That means every time a challenge has been given, yes, the direction was given, some challenge was given, but it was the people who delivered. Now this company around four months back or four or five months back had a HR department which only used to look at salaries and leaves, absenteeism and those kind of admin issues. Today the HR has become real HR. That means they have started training which was never heard of in restaurant business of that size. Today there is a training cell. Actually they are making buffers of managers. Tomorrow when they open a another uh, uh, restaurant, they should have a ready-made manager who can immediately take, take over. And in this whole process, there is one person who played a big role. That was uh, one person who actually rose from the ranks of a waiter. And uh, what happened is when they started the restaurant called Kintas and they were, this person was go, uh, told that go and manage that. And he went and started that uh, restaurant and it became successful. So here also he was head of operations and we said that please do it. Initially he was skeptical but once he got into it he completely changed it. And that is Caesar. Caesar, can you please stand up? I will ask Ladies for a round of applause for this man. Come on. This is the guy who made the, oh, everything possible in here. So we changed him and he started changing the people down here. That's the fact. If you change a committed person He's very capable, and I'm sure every single person in the organization is capable. But you have to be convinced that they are able to perform well, and that you're giving the tools for doing that. Now, this is a very interesting story. Um, the first month of implementation, when CSR came out with the 2B process, the new process, we spent one month to implement in the first restaurant. Um, then, CSR came to the second restaurant, and it was done in one week. One week. You can imagine that. By the time we came to the third restaurant, we were uh, having a meeting in the morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, we explained the benefits of doing this uh, process. And we explained the results we were having in the other restaurants. And now Caesar asked to, uh, to there, there were cooks, there were uh, Cashiers, everyone is there. So Caesar asked, by when can we have this done? Honestly, I, I was, I was uh, looking for something like, okay, next Monday we can start. And they said, why not today? And I was, okay, what's happening here? This was the point, the time, when I figured out that we were actually changing the culture of the company. We were doing a lot of things, but when, we, when, when I heard, why not today, that is the point when I figure out that, okay, we're doing a great job out here. And they are actually understanding what this is all about. So, we also wanted to increase the uh, clients in non-peak hours, so that's why we introduced a happy hour 
which was 20% uh, off since 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. Um, the result wasn't that good, and I believe there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, we didn't actually communicate it to, uh, massively. However, this was a good tryout because this was done before we introduced the unrefusable offer. And uh, I'm sure it will come back in the few, uh, in a, later on. Um, we also aggressively market events, and this is interesting because uh, we have a lot of people celebrating birthdays and anniversaries in our restaurant, and we didn't have a strong program for them, so we created a whole new event um, package, or how you call that? Yeah, actually, uh, we saw that after 3 o'clock, 3, 3.30, typically the restaurants are free. There is hardly anybody who is coming, and... Uh, so how to utilize? So one of the ways was, can we organize some events? Maybe we can uh, earmark uh, space. We looked at Pizza Hut and we looked at McDonald's and all, and we saw that everywhere they organize events. Of course, they have gone much ahead, and now they have got a dedicated space for that. So um, Taipak actually developed a database of customers. The customers who were coming, they started taking, uh, creating a database. They had a database, they actually improved on it, and now they had huge number of names, maybe how much, 40,000? Even, 40, even more. Even names. more names. And a call center, they have a call center, and the call center people started calling up every name and started telling them that, okay, we do host events also. Today, I think uh, there were, I mean, this was started around two to three months back. Today, on an average in a week, possibly three to four events are happening. Three to four birthdays or something like that is happening. So. We have started utilizing the time, that uh, part of the kitchen as well as uh, the dining room between 4 and 6 or 4 and 7 o'clock, something like that. Thank you. So now can we go ahead? Thank you. Now, the expansion strategy was also modified because of TOC. We decided to just focus on restaurant business. We no longer want to go into uh, the retail stores. And uh, well, we decided what not to do, actually. Actually, this, this was very strange. Initially, when we started, the people were very gung-ho. We should do retail, meaning our tea is very successful. We should get into retail. I was wondering, like, uh, what are you thinking? You have no clue about retail. You run a Chinese restaurant business, and you want to get into retail. No, it seems very sexy. We'll have a brand. There is a brand called Jazz Tea. We'll also have Thai Pak Tea over there, something like that. So first of all, first thing we did is no, you cannot. First stop that. You will not do it. You will only concentrate on restaurant. This is the business you know, and that's what you're going to do. So thankfully, they all agreed, and they dropped that initiative. <laughs> Now, another sexy thing was to grow outside Culiacan, right? So we can say, well, we, we have a restaurant in uh, several cities and all that, but we figured out that there is enough market in our town to start five new restaurants, as easy as that. And also one by one. The grand plan was to start five restaurants together. Let's do it. Uh, with a, meaning with uh, enough considerations was not given on the manpower, that was the bandwidth of the management. Yeah, money, possibly money they had, they could have started, but what about the bandwidth? There were only three or four people. So again, um, they realized and they decided, no, not five, let's go one by one, we will go. Yes, and at that point we didn't know that we didn't have the bandwidth. Actually, we thought we had. But as, as the process, uh, of the implementation became more and more real, we realized that we were not ready for that. And that's why we started our general manager's training and all that, so. So today the idea is like before they start any new restaurant, uh, everything will be ready. All the staff, all the general manager will be fully trained, all the processes will be in place, and when they start, when they start the new restaurant, we don't believe that it will have a, you know, hibernation time of six months before the sales pick up. But the sales has to pick up immediately. Uh, that's the idea. Now, results. Um, this is 
one month back, after we actually started the uh, unrefusable offer, and the question was, how is our service compared to two months ago? 91% said it is better than before. 9% said it is the same. None said it's worse. How is our delivery time compared to two months ago? You can see this. 97% of the clients said it is better than before. Three said it remains the same. No one said it was worse. How is the food taste compared to two months ago? 67% said it is better than before. And please remember, we already had a product that our clients liked. We already had a good product. So 67% to me is a very good percentage. And specifically, nothing was done to improve quality, by the way. There was no quality improvement or anything was taken. It was just we reduced the time. That's it. Yeah. The recipe was, was the same, exactly the same. So do you remember this chart? Turnaround time since the client orders until he pays. Before it was 70% above 50 minutes. Today, 60% of our clients are below 50 minutes. So. 65% of our clients are actually leaving the restaurant in less than 50 minutes. You can imagine the, the, the way of uh, the turnaround and the throughput it generates. Now, only 0.35% of the orders had a discount in the first month. Remember, our, our unrefusable offer is 15 minutes or less. So only 0.35% went above 15 minutes. And uh, please have in mind that we have 5,500 orders every week. So this means 20 orders. Still, we don't want to have any discounts, but I think it's okay for a beginning, for a start. Um, we increased two cooks per restaurant, but our total amount of uh, employees in the kitchen was reduced from 50 to 40, just by changing the process. Culture change where everything is possible. I think we have reviewed this. Um, people is getting involved on everything. And they are actually gaining this ownership feeling which are taking our, our uh, project one step further. Everyone wants to participate in the new changes. They are able to design and execute changes. So we no longer need to be there to uh, design. The solution can can be taken from them. Yeah, the change is so significant uh, that uh, Jaime, uh, Mr. Jaime Poon, he said that, Sanjay, we need to uh, you know, increase the service quality. And the question was, uh, where do we go? And they took up a challenge, which seems very ridiculous. But they say that we want to be a world benchmark in terms of service quality. We are nowhere, we know. We are too small. We are nowhere. But our aim is to become a world benchmark in service quality. Now, that is the kind of culture change. And which is applauded by everybody who were present in the room. Uh, yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it. So there is no more innovation. The same people, six months back, everything, no, no, this is not possible. What do you think? 37 years we are running this business. Do you think that we are jokers or what? Now, those same set of people were saying that everything is possible. And also, this, this new thing, it just came last week to, became, to become a benchmark in service quality. And as the unrefusable offer, it will help us to do anything we need to do in order to reach the goal. And we know we can do it. Now, here's a very uh, interesting example. Um, Valentine's Day is one of the best days of the restaurant. And uh, Valentine's Day 2009, we had a peak delivery time of 60 minutes. And uh, to, to get your table, it's over 50, 60 minutes. So at least two hours to eat. This year, peak delivery time, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 
What's that? 70% decrease in delivery times? And this was one month after we started the implementation. And as long as we have orders coming in, they must keep cooking, right? And imagine being in this hot place for eight straight hours cooking. It's a very physical job. And the first break was at 8 p.m. because we were not able to satisfy the demand. This year, the first kitchen break was at 3 p.m. You could go at 3 p.m. peak time, peak day into the kitchen, and you will see our cooks standing like this. And we sold more this year than last year. So they were resting, they were uh, actually enjoying, and I was in the, in the dining room and I asked, or a dining room supervisor, how are we doing? And he said, you know, I don't know, I think sales are, went down this year. So why do you say that? Because I don't feel stressed. So I went into the kitchen and realized that we were actually having more orders than last year. And this guy was not stressed. Imagine that. Now, we created this cooking manual. Hi, I, we I are running out of time. We have to possibly go quickly. Okay. Just to uh, tell you the results, throughput results, everybody must be wondering what happened to throughput. Uh, the month of May, uh, the throughput is definitely more by around 6 or 7%. The indications of June, it's going to further go up as compared to the last year. And Mexico at this point of time is going through a little recession time. So considering everything, I think that we are moving towards the positive, uh, positive uh, direction. And remember, this is only six month old story just six months old story. And we were very, very fortunate to have several Alex Rogos, meaning there was not one Alex Rogo, which was Jaime. There was another Jaime's father. There was Enrique. There was Caesar. There are very many Alex Rogos in this company because one thing they, they say that whatever we discuss, we decide, we do it. We don't do any follow-up for implementation in this company. This is the great thing about this particular company. I mean, we are at the end of this presentation. I'll just quickly go through, so what is the way forward? And uh, Lisa, some marketing initiatives is, uh, are listed, and some of them we just conceived last, last week. So it's not written over here. First of all, to further uh, exploit, we are going to do unrefusable offer for delivery. We are today having unrefusable offer only for the restaurant and pickup. So the next step is to do for delivery, something like uh, Domino's Pizza. 20 minutes or 30 minutes or you get it free, something like that. Uh, we also are wondering, not immediately, but maybe three to four months time, looking at starting breakfast, because that is another time when there's nothing happening. The capacity is going waste. So we can possibly do something. Uh, there are other things like dessert trolley and all those kind of stuff, which uh, will increase the throughput. Coaching and mentoring cell is going on, and this is an ongoing pro process. Service quality improvement is an ongoing process. New idea cell, meaning change in menu, change in taste, change in uh, what you call dishes, all those things are uh, also being handled, and we have just created something called a, called a new idea cell, and uh, that is also, that, will be, that is going to be an ongoing work. But uh, in marketing, we have started another thought process. We don't have the answers yet. But we are looking at something to create word of mouth, because we realize that in service industry, the biggest uh, lever to, sale, to increase sales is word of mouth. So we are looking at uh, something kind of uh, what airlines use, plus add it with some kind of referral system. That means you become a member, you get a card, and every time you come and use this, I mean, uh, have food in the restaurant, you accumulate some points, you can use that once later on. And secondly, if you do refer and somebody comes with your referral, uh, you will get some more advantage, something like that. We haven't yet finalized it, but that is the direction where we are going to go. So thank you very much. Uh, this is what uh, we have achieved in six months, and we hope to grow much bigger in the times to come. Just let me, let me add one small thing. Uh, throughput went, went up uh, for 6% in May. However, if you compare January, for example, it was minus 12%. February, minus 12%. Then we had 
a minus three on, on March, and so on. So 6% increase in throughput in May is a very big figure for, for this situation, right? 